Hi, welcome to another video. So, we need to talk about Gemini 3. If you have been watching my channel, you know that I have been testing this model extensively. It is incredibly fast, the context window is huge, and the price is unbeatable. In my benchmarks, it often scores a perfect 100% on coding tasks. However, if you use it for long enough in a real-world production environment, you start to notice the quirks. It has a tendency to be a bit lazy. It sometimes hallucinates libraries that don't exist. Or it gives you a UI that is better than Sonnet, but kind of dumb at times. And while it is great at front-end, it often struggles when you ask it to handle complex back-end logic or state management. It just kind of throws code at you without thinking about scalability. But I have been using some system instructions to fix this, and I want to show you that how you can make it even better. I have made a specific system prompt that basically allows you to lobotomize the lazy parts of Gemini and replace them with the personality of a senior front-end architect who is obsessed with perfection. I am calling it the King Mode prompt. It fixes the instruction following issues. It forces the model to stick to the libraries you actually have installed. And it introduces a secret trigger word that forces the model to stop rushing and actually think through complex back-end problems. This makes Gemini not just good at front-end, but actually capable of handling the back-end architecture that it usually messes up. So, let's get this set up. I'm going to be using Verdant for this demo. I find it handles context injection really well. You can obviously use this prompt in Kilo code or anywhere to be honest, but putting it into the project rules or system prompt section of your IDE or coder is where it really shines. I've pasted the raw markdown of the prompt into my system settings. The link to the prompt is in the description. You just grab the raw text. Now, let me show it to you in action. I'm going to ask it to build a movie tracker app. This is my standard benchmark because it requires a database connection, a front-end UI, state management, and some logic for sorting and filtering. Usually, if you ask Vanilla Gemini to build a movie tracker, it gives you a generic list. It uses basic HTML and CSS, maybe a little vanilla JavaScript, and it creates a very noisy, cluttered interface. It has no architectural thought behind it, but we have King Mode active. So, I'm going to type this prompt into Verdant. Build a movie tracker using React, Tailwind CSS, and Shadson UI. I need a dashboard to view trending movies, and I want a sidebar for navigation. Watch what happens. First off, notice the tone. It doesn't give me three paragraphs of, sure, I can help you with that. Here's a movie tracker. I hope you like it. It cuts the fluff. The system prompt explicitly tells it, zero fluff, no philosophical lectures, output first. In literal seconds, it starts scaffolding the component. But look at the code structure. It isn't just dumping a massive file. It's breaking it down. And here is where it gets interesting. The prompt has a specific directive called intentional minimalism. It says, if it looks like a template, it is wrong. So, looking at this CSS, it's not using standard Tailwind utility classes for a generic card. It's using custom spacing, specific typography choices, and it is strictly adhering to the Shadsen UI library I requested. Standard Gemini often forgets you are using a library and starts writing custom CSS for buttons or creating its own button component from scratch. This prompt forbids that. It says, if a UI library is detected, you must use it. You can see right here in Verdant, it's importing the card, button, and input components from the Shadson package rather than creating divs with click handlers. This makes the code so much cleaner and actually production ready. It created the files, 
and the UI looks remarkably high-end. It's using white space effectively. It's not cluttered. It actually feels like a senior engineer designed it. This is the avant-garde UI designer persona kicking in. But it doesn't just stop there. We know Gemini is good at front-end. The real test is the back-end and complex logic, which is usually its weakness. Let's say I want to add a recommendation algorithm. I want the app to analyze the movies I've watched and suggest new ones based on genre and director but I want it to be performant because I might have 10,000 movies in my history. If I just ask, add recommendations, standard Gemini will likely give me a simple filter array method that runs on the client side. That crashes your browser if you have too much data. It takes the easy path. This is where the king mode prompt shines. It has a trigger feature called UltraThink. The prompt documentation says, When the user prompts UltraThink, immediately suspend the zero fluff rule. Maximum depth. Analyze the request through every lens. So, I'm going to type into the chat. UltraThink design a scalable recommendation engine for this app, assuming 10,000 plus records. How do we handle state and performance? Now, watch the difference. This is kind of awesome. It stops rushing. It is no longer just spitting out code. It enters this deep analytical mode. It starts breaking down the problem into dimensions. First, it analyzes the psychological aspect. How long is the user willing to wait for recommendations to load? It talks about optimistic UI updates, so the user feels like it's instant. Then. It hits the technical analysis. It explicitly rejects the client-side filtering method I was worried about. It suggests using a memoized selector or moving the logic to a server-side function if we were using Next.js. It talks about repaint reflow costs in the browser. This is stuff standard AI assistants rarely mention unless you bully them into it. It also brings up Scalability. It suggests normalizing the state shape, storing movies as an object keyed by ID rather than an array, to make lookups O1 instead of ON. That is a computer science fundamental that usually gets lost in AI code generation. And then, after this deep reasoning chain, it gives me the code. But it's not just the code, it's the optimized code. It implements use memo for the calculations. It sets up a web worker structure so the calculation doesn't freeze the main UI thread. It effectively turns Gemini from a junior developer who rushes to stack overflow into a senior architect who sits back and says, Well, actually, we need to consider the memory overhead here. Let's push it one step further. I want to change the theme. Usually, this is where things break. You ask for dark mode, and the AI rewrites the whole file and forgets the logic you just added. Or it mixes up styles. I'll tell it. Switch this to a cyberpunk aesthetic. Neon colors, dark background. Because of the avant-garde UI designer persona in the prompt, it doesn't just change the background to black and the text to green. It understands cyberpunk in the context of intentional minimalism. It starts adding glow effects using Tailwind's drop shadow. It changes the border radii to be sharper. It keeps the layout clean, but applies a theme. And critically, because the prompt enforces library discipline, it applies these styles on top of the Shatson components using the class name prop rather than ripping out the library components and replacing them with raw HTML. It respects the architecture we already built. This workflow, starting with a strict, no-nonsense front-end build, using UltraThink to solve the hard logic problems and then relying on the persona for styling, it streamlines your workflow a lot. You aren't fighting the AI to stop it from writing bad code 
you are guiding a distinct personality that already knows the rules. One thing I really appreciate is the edge case analysis during the ultra think mode. When I asked for the recommendation engine, it explicitly listed what could go wrong. It mentioned, what if the movie has no genre tags and provided a fallback strategy in the code? That is the kind of defensive coding that saves you hours of debugging later. So, why does this matter? Gemini 3 is already a beast on the benchmarks. I showed you the graphs in the last video. It is beating almost everything on price to performance. But benchmarks are sterile. They don't account for the messiness of real development, where instructions are vague and requirements change. This prompt bridges that gap. It forces the model to treat your instructions with a higher level of scrutiny. If you are using Verdant or Cursor, or really any tool where you can inject a system prompt, this is a no-brainer. It effectively upgrades the model's intelligence for free. You get the speed of Gemini 3, but the reasoning quality feels much closer to something like Claude 3.5 Opus, especially when you use that ultra-think trigger. And honestly, seeing it handle the back-end logic for the movie tracker without making rookie mistakes was refreshing. It didn't just write code, it architected a solution. So, is this the perfect prompt? Well, nothing is perfect. Sometimes, the avant-garde persona can be a little too minimal, and you might have to ask it to add borders or labels back in if it gets too artistic. And obviously, using the ultra-think mode burns through more tokens because it outputs a lot of text before the code. So keep that in mind if you are paying for API usage, although with Gemini 3's pricing, that is negligible. But for the specific problem of Gemini being good at front-end, bad at back-end logic, and lazy with instructions, this is a massive upgrade. It forces the model to slow down and actually think when it matters, and speed up and shut up when it doesn't. Which is pretty affordable compared to hiring a real senior architect. I've been using this for a few days on a side project, and honestly, the reduction in lazy code snippets is noticeable. It feels like the model respects my time more. It assumes I know what I'm doing, and it tries to match that energy. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.